When we show our gold, we have a kind of a responsibility to it that might really make demands on us. The weight of that gold also in the psyche and when you fail to, to do that for whatever reason, yeah, how distorting that can be to your, to your life and how painful. Well, Franz takes something forward, which is also in the uh, Gnostic Gospels from Nag Hammadi, that if we bring what is in us forward, that there is a kind of blessing. But if we fail to bring what is inside of us forward, it becomes a poison. Mm. <gasps> I love that. So there's a danger in hiding. Because when we hide, there's a way in which the public does not know that we have ownership of our own creativity. Mm -hmm. mm. Or as Robert Bly said, your gold, showing your gold. Mm. So Nicolas Cage, who, who might have had some gold in his personality, fails to share his gold or to let anyone see his gold, which mm. brings up that other question of who was he such that bringing his gold forward was either so shameful or so frightening. Mm -hmm. And I think like a lot of us in the world, having anyone see our gold, psychological gold, and subjecting it to other people's opinions other people's desires to monetize it or to change it in one way or another can be very frightening. Mm -hmm. And we can be extremely ambivalent about that. Well, also because when we show our gold, we have a kind of a responsibility to it that might really make demands on us. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, hypothetically, if Paul had shown his gold and tried to write about this, he might have he might have really had to harness his, you know, psychic energy in service to doing this research. Instead, you, you get the feeling he's kind of coasted, you know. He hasn't really had to put a lot of effort in. He sort of probably you get the feeling he teaches the same class year after year. Yeah. So so there's a way that he maybe was uh reluctant to let his ideas make a demand on him and he he just wanted the payoff, you know. He he just wanted the, the quick connection that he was looking for from your character, Kate, of, you know, hey, you guys are going to set me up with a publisher, right? Yeah. Uh, no, how about a yeah. Sprite commercial? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So this is something I was truly kind of talking about last night. You're talking about like that gold, like the weight of that gold also yes. in the psyche and which I know you've, you've mentioned before on the, on the show, but just when you fail to, to do that for whatever reason, um, yeah, how distorting that can be to your, to your life and how painful. And, and von Franz takes something forward, which is also in the uh, Gnostic Gospels from Nag Hammadi, that if we bring what is in us forward, mm -hmm. that there is a kind of blessing. But if we fail to bring what is inside of us forward, it becomes a poison. Yep. Mm. So <gasps> at I love some that. point, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The talent will hurt us if we don't give it breathing room, if we don't let it come to life at some point. So I'd like to personalize this for a certain moment. You're a talented person. You're funny. You're creative. You had to make that decision that your talent is talking to you and pressing on you as a young mm -hmm. person. How did you navigate that decision of when you would let other people see your gold? And mm. when you felt that you needed to hide it until a certain point? I think I started very young, which is deeply mm. helpful. Like I did stand mm -hmm. up for the first time when I was 17. Wow. So I think I was still, um, I mean, I was, had always been the class clown and I always felt very much from when I was extremely young, like I want to be an actor. I wanna, and I just, that was my, the way I moved through the, the world was just being... Um, a clown and a ham and so that's mm -hmm. my identity was so firmly formed around that for better or for worse and so <laughs> i but i from a very so i i started yeah when, when i was 17 and i think that really served me because also just the pain tolerance i mean when i think about it now i'm like how did i do that yeah. i had to get a fake yep. id to go do open mics like the laugh factory on sunset boulevard at 5 30 oh in the God. afternoon on Tuesdays. I mean, it was like, Jesus. and I was the youngest by far. It was mostly, it was, you know, men, it was all men. Um, and I somehow was able to force myself into that. Um, 
my best friend, Sammy Birch, was by my side waiting for me, which really helped. Um, and mm. so I had that support, but I, um, I don't think I could have, I think so often when people wait longer and their identities or egos are more formed or something, then it just becomes far too terrifying. And so mm-hmm. because I started so young, um, that and my you started yeah. before you evaluated the different consequences right? totally you, yeah. you just yeah. you were already leaping off the cliff like the tarot card of the fool kind of yeah absolutely yeah you ha- you have yeah. to be and so i sort of did that almost like self hypnosis of just like this is what i'm going to do and this is i'm deciding that this is who i'm going to be and this is going to be what my what my life is about and so i yeah, I just did it. I, I I just think that is what I did. I never really saw it turning out a different way. So and it was very hard. And I have to, yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, I also, you know, my father's a visual artist. So we, like, I, I can't pretend. It's not like, well, my parents were locksmiths and they told me, don't you <laughs> dream of Hollywood, little girl. You know, it's like I grew up in a house in which, you know, my dad, well, you know, this was made available to me, this idea of like, oh, you can be an artist wow. and you can. You know, so, but so yeah, we have a personality that's in the front of the house. You know, that's that's right there in the proscenium of the stage. But then we have the personality that's you know in stage left behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if that other side of you, the the other voice in you, is coming out in other ways. For instance, perhaps in your writing, or in other dimensions of your creative life that isn't the 17 year old girl who's you know the vaudevillian you know out there in the front. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the show that I have been doing, um, which is called Kate, is sort of this, all my work tends to, you know, it's this idea like you're doomed to make the same painting over and over again, or like the same mm-hmm. movie over and yes. over again. And, and so yep. I, I kind of can't get away from like, oh yeah, I'm sort of always, my work is sort of always about performance or about the nature mm-hmm. of the performing self or these sort of like liminal, liminoid, <laughs> you know, like... Um, <laughs> like the self as that sort of creature in my own, uh, there's always a sort of like meta element that I can't get away from. And this show, because my standup is also highly improvised, this show was my attempt to, which was, it was a huge personal mm-hmm. challenge. Like I'm actually going to try to write something. And that was kind of this, right. there was a lot of fear going into that. Like of course, of like, mm, like it was like unfamiliar technology of the self for me to like try mm-hmm. to write and kind of adhere to some kind of, Aristotelian logic, like, okay, what if I tried to write a story where there something happened? Wow. And and then of course I ended up well, I ended up writing the show that is sort of about myself, but also not about myself in this kind of um um I think because stand up is such a is seen as a sort of confession, you know, and this um performance mm-hmm. of confession, I've always resisted that. And my stand up has always like kind of not has always not been about myself. But mm-hmm. I've also always felt that performance is just inherently so vulnerable it's you up there whether or not you're talking about your you know childhood like it's still you it's still the material of your your like, psyche in life like and the so things that you create and fantasize are still coming out of you yeah <laughs> so, completely yeah, so yeah. i've always kind of been almost like baffled there is this there's this real cultural particularly now like insistence on authenticity and truth and like revealing your trauma in this very cogent straightforward way um where but I'm even like, that's a narrative, right? Yes, of course. So I'm like, well, it's yeah. all, when, and and this idea of like the sort of person on stage is like bearing their heart to you, and it's like, well, they're in a costume. They decided what to wear. You know, it's like every, the body on stage is always this performance, even when it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, doing this. Perf- and I've always been fascinated by that performance of like the stripped down truth. Like that's always seemed so strange mm-hmm. to me, and kind of. Um, not that there isn't a way to be authentic on, like I, I've never under, like I've always used artifice. There was, there was something that um, I remember reading when I was 18 um, that really helped mm-hmm. me, which was, I think it was, and I've been trying to find this. Someone maybe can find it for me. It's like Carl Dreyer, the filmmaker, he was writing about the making of Ordet, or he was right. And he said something about using artifice to strip artifice from artifice, mm-hmm. um, which like, and that really, clicked for me and I was like oh that's exactly what I find funny that's like my that's what I do or that's what I relate to and so yeah artifice has always for me been the way in 
because that is what life actually that that's mm -hmm. more real than reality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way right but it's also the symbolic because yes. the artifice is the artifact and mm -hmm. the artifact is is some kind of a representative mm -hmm. object that is indirectly or symbolically related to a larger reality yeah so mm -hmm. it reveals mm -hmm. even while it conceals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes like every symbol yeah uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so the performance is a symbol of something greater even though yeah. what is visible the art yeah. is just the, also like, the gate and this kind of idea of like the mask like you know there's this idea of oh the performer wearing the mask and then the place where you see the skin of the act of the actor and then <laughs> you're aware of that slippage and so that mm -hmm. kind of like slippage has always been to me what's interesting or just where i go mm -hmm. and like what i kind of mm -hmm. can't get away from <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, why people yeah. love when uh, like saturday night live people are doing a skit and then somebody just laughs uncontrollably like the audience right. just yeah. howls to see the slip and even yeah. perhaps more fascinating when the laughter is fake ah the artifice of the artifice <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs>